Welcome back to the DAX Power Pivot and Data Analysis course. We're on Group Work 3 and we're talking about linking and importing Excel data into the data model. So it's all about whether to link or not to link. I just want to take a couple of moments to run through the objectives so that we're all super clear on what's coming up. So first things first, we're having a look at linking Excel data into the data model. Now this will duplicate the Excel data and we'll look at the pros and cons for that. Next thing we'll do is import some Excel data into the model as well. Now we briefly looked at this when we were importing our data from Microsoft Access. So of course underpinning all of this is relationships. Now we're introducing new data in the form of Excel into our data model and we'll have to think about the relationships between the existing tables and any new tables that we introduce into the model. Now during all of this we'll be creating a new pivot table and we're going to have a look at a little bit of conditional formatting just to bring that data alive. Okay so I hope you're clear on that guys that's what's coming up lots of super new features to have a look at and I'll see you over in the first exercise. Okay guys, welcome to Group Work 3. I'm currently on page 21 of the user guide for those of you that are following along and we're talking about linking Excel data into the data model. So if you have an existing table of Excel data that you want to add to the data model, it's really quick and easy to do. I'm just going to point out some best practices here for you guys before we continue. And it's advised that linking Excel data is great, quick and easy to do if it's under 2000 rows or so. The reason is that the data is replicated to the data model every time you switch between the data model and the Excel worksheet. Now there is a way of suspending that. We can put that on manual and I'll show you how to do that. But if your data contains thousands of rows, then really consider importing from other sources in the Get External Data group in the data model window. Linking your table also gets round that cannot edit in Power Pivot window limitation that we've got. We've already seen that when we're in the, the data model itself that we can't edit individual cells or rows of data. Remember that any changes to the underlying data has to be done at source. But if you're linking your Excel data into the data model, then it's a nice way of editing the data more or less on the fly. We can also add columns of data directly into the Excel worksheet and that will be replicated into the data model. So depending on your circumstances there and as long as your data is under a couple of thousand rows, then it might be a really good option for you to, to consider. So let's take a look at how we do that. I'm currently in our sales report and I'm on Group Work 3 sheet, the GW3 sheet. So the first thing we're going to do is format the data as a table. And there's a couple of ways to do that. So as long as my cursor's in the data somewhere, then from the Home tab, under the Styles group, I can just click Format as Table and select one of these options. My preferred method, and it's really quick and easy, as long as I'm somewhere in the data, I'm holding down the Control key on my keyboard and pressing T for Table. The Create Table dialog box appears and I just have to be careful to remember to tick my table has headers, which it does, and I'm just going to click on OK. The next super important thing to do is you'll notice the contextual tab has appeared for table tools and on the design ribbon I'm going to give my table a name and I'm going to call it Region Managers can't have any spaces. You could use an underscore if you prefer to do that, but there can't be any spaces, but we'll just keep it as region managers. Now to add the region managers table to the data model, all we have to do is select the power pivot tab and then under the tables group, we've got an option to add to data model. And the first thing you'll notice is on the sheet tab for region managers, we have a link icon indicating that this is a linked table. 
We've also got a contextual tab in our data model window with link table and table tools. So if there are any changes, we can update, update selected records, go to the Excel table directly. And this is where if your data has got a lot of updates and each time you go between the data model and the Excel data itself, if it's taking a long time, if there's a delay there because it's updating, you can change it from automatic here to manual. I'm going to leave it on automatic because we've got a very little amount of data there. But again, if we had thousands of rows of data and there you were suffering delays, this is where you would be able to change that. I'm just going to go back to Excel and we're just going to test out whether any changes to the link table does show up in the data model. So let's just choose Rosanna and let's change Rosanna Martins to just Rosanna Martin and we'll just click on enter. So if we go back to the data model window, it took about two or three seconds and it's changed and that was without me refreshing doing anything. So that's proving to us that the changes made in the source data in the Excel data itself is updated automatically. So the next thing for us to do is create relationships and we know that to do that we have to be in diagram view. So on the home tab let's click on diagram view and there's our new table. So we're going to create a relationship between the region managers table and the territories table. Now region managers is going to be a lookup table for the territories table. So I'm going to move the territories table down and I'm going to reposition regional managers above. So looking at the fields on offer, from the region managers I have a group field and territories there's a group field. So that indicates to me that these two tables will be related via the group keys. So I'm going to click and drag and let go. So let's test that out. Let's see whether that's created the relationship in order for the region managers and the territory table to share information. So to do that, we're going to have to insert a pivot table. So I'm just going to click and this time I'm going to select on the existing worksheet because we're in group work three and I'm going to select D1 by collapsing this little button and selecting my cell. So from the new region managers and we can see there's no faint lines between region managers and any of the tables so it's looking good indicating that our relationships have been established. So from region managers I'm going to select region manager and put that in rows and then from the sales table I'm going to select sales amount. So let's just think about that for a moment and what we've achieved. Let's go back to the data model window and we're in data view. Now we selected region managers from the region managers table and also sales amount. So the relationship has traversed through territories all the way down into sales and it's allowed us to do that because of the relationship that exists between region managers and territories. And remember, this is a one to many relationship. And remember, from region managers to territories is a one to many relationship, where region managers is on the one side, is the lookup table, and territories is now on the many side. But the relationship between territories and sales is territories is the one side, it's the unique values, but the sales table is the many side with the duplicate values. So let's return to our pivot table and let's jazz it up a little bit with some conditional formatting. The first thing we'll do is just sort our sum of sales column. So if I just click in here, I can right click, hover over sort, and we'll go largest to smallest. And we can see that Louisa there is topping the table. Then we'll apply some conditional formatting. Now another top tip here guys is I see often my students highlighting a particular row of data that they want to apply the formatting in. However, that limits the formatting to the, the cells that you've actually selected. In this case, it would be just 
three rows. So if our table expanded, then it would still only apply the conditional formatting to those three cells. However, if I click on just the first cell and from our home tab, go over to the styles group and I'll leave it up to you. You can apply whichever formatting you, you like. I'm just going to select this one. And then before I move on, if I select the formatting options drop down and choose the last option, which is all cells showing sum of sales amount, it will copy the formatting down. However, if my pivot table expands in size, that formatting will grow or expand to the number of rows it needs to cover. I hope that makes sense. So just save your work, just click on your save and then up next is importing an Excel file into the data model. So the scenario being that we have thousands and thousands of rows of data and it just won't be practical for us to link that data. So that's what's coming up next guys. I'll see you in the next video lecture.